So Daft Punk are officially broken up. They're done. I thought this would never happen. They've been around for so long, but after nearly 30 years of making music as a group, they've announced their split. Even though they haven't dropped anything in eight years and have barely performed a dozen times in the last decade, they remain one of the most iconic groups in modern music, having inspired countless hits while creating dozens of their own. Now that we have a full picture of their career and musical output, what does that impact look like? How did they get there? And will it continue into the future? This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. If you sign up with the link below, you'll also get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, where you can find the extended cut of this video, or rather the true cut that YouTube doesn't allow. So if you sign up for CuriosityStream for less than $15 for a whole year, you'll get Nebula included literally for free. That's curiositystream.com slash Volksgeist. Though they eventually worked with industry giants like Kanye, The Weeknd, Pharrell Williams, Giorgio Moroder, while simultaneously releasing their own chart-topping music, Daft Punk weren't universally loved from the start. Critics had no special appreciation for their music. Pitchfork rated Discovery a mediocre 6.4 out of 10, calling it tinny, and writing that their enjoyment of the project was diminished, perhaps because they hadn't taken enough ecstasy and horse tranquilizers before listening to it. Human After All was similarly made fun of, with reviewers ranging from disappointed to outright disgusted at the band change in direction. Pitchfork described Human After All as Daft Punk going through the motions and wrote that its defining characteristic was a lack of joy and wonderment. So it wasn't until the late 2000s when Daft Punk really started being recognized by critics. Yes, they were popular, iconic, well-liked by fans, but it took a long time for critics to warm up to them. Funnily enough, Pitchfork gave homework a 9.2 in a retrospective review published in 2018, a classic case of an album being released ahead of its time. There were a few factors that changed Daft Punk's reputation. I think Kanye sampling them on Stronger was a big deal for them, and for Kanye too, considering that Stronger eventually ended up being the biggest song of his career. They were also shouted out by LCD Sound System, they were collaborating with Pharrell Williams, they also worked with Kanye on Yeezus, one of the more boundary-pushing albums of the last 10 years. It was heavily inspired by their sound. Looking back nearly a decade removed from Daft Punk's last major artistic statement, it's easy to compare the pros and cons of the records. But when it came out, Random Access Memories increased Daft Punk's credibility immediately. It was full of massive pop hits and deep emotional grooves and ballads, and an overall cinematic atmosphere, aided by beautiful mixing and production. And it took Daft Punk to a higher level than anyone imagined possible. NME rated Ram 10 out of 10. Rolling Stone gave it four stars. They won five Grammys. Daft Punk had become living legends overnight. And while Random Access Memories remains a fresh sounding masterpiece to this day, when it came out we had no idea it was not only their magnum opus, it was also their swan song. In the eight years since Random Access Memories, their only public contribution to music has been two songs off the weekend's 2016 record, Starboy. Daft Punk have always been private people. Let's not forget, their iconic masks were originally conceived as a way to maintain privacy as they became increasingly famous. And so we don't know much about the people behind the masks, but that's how they wanted it. It seems like they didn't want their lofty musical goals to be impeded upon by personality or performance. And in the end, they were able to achieve some very lofty goals indeed. And Ram, underneath its major success, does contain something of a goodbye from the group. Being so big, so full of sound and story, it's easy to forget how the record ends. Marked by deep, moving synth arpeggios and a vague dialogue, the intentions of Ram's closing track are entirely unclear. Were they hinting at a new stage in their career, or were they saying goodbye? I guess now that it's the final track of their discography, we don't need to ask anymore. But whether or not Daft Punk were actively working on new music, or if they hadn't picked up their instruments since 2016, it's unlikely there will ever be an answer. And while that's a frustrating feeling to deal with, that frustration is coming from the same place that made Daft Punk special in the first place. They've always just let the music speak for itself. One of the main reasons they elevated themselves above other house acts all the way back in the 90s is because they're so dedicated to the music above anything else. And that same dedication is what led them to a silent split. They were never the type to announce their plans, so why start now at the very end? From their music to their imagery to their live shows, Daft Punk paved the way for countless artists to follow in their footsteps. They truly are some of the most famous and beloved musicians alive, and while they've been performing as robots, their humanity is most obvious in the moments we don't see, especially now when they've decided to walk away from it all without a word. Daft Punk may have only ever released four studio albums, but without them, there's so much more music that would have been completely different or never made at all. 
Kanye, The Weeknd, Skrillex, Deadmau5, LCD Sound System, Pharrell Williams, all these legendary artists have named Daft Punk as big inspirations for their own sound. Skrillex practically said he never would have even tried to make music if it wasn't for Alive 2007. In the words of Pharrell Williams, himself a music legend, Daft Punk are responsible for EDM in mainstream music. And without a doubt, I would say they started the disco funk revival. And over the years, people have claimed that the very sound of electronic music itself changes every time Daft Punk makes an album. Them. But they never got too into EDM or disco funk because, you know, they were faceless robots whose yearly public appearances could be counted on one hand. They had an idea of what they wanted to be and never watered it down for any trend or movement. In fact, I would say after creating EDM, they ended it too with Ram completely moving the industry in a new direction. But after that, they just seemed uninterested in continuing. Just a few more collaborations and then years of silence. But despite their disappearance, the hype never died down. Even today, fans think there might be another project to be released post-breakup. But if anything is for certain, it makes sense that they've chosen to end it without so much as a passing goodbye. Daft Punk always wanted the music to speak for itself, nothing more. In the end, can you really blame them for sneaking out through the back door? In the words of Guy himself, all the way back in 1997, there's been this big hype, but we don't care. We'll stop when we stop making good music. We don't know if this is why they broke up, but there's one thing I can say for certain. We're gonna be hearing their music and their impact for decades to come. I have to tell you something. If you're interested in more content like this, I want you to know that YouTube is the worst place to watch it. You see, I'm not allowed to use example clips of the music I'm talking about. Even though that's a perfectly legal thing to do, it's banned on YouTube. So while I've been talking to you about Daft Punk, we've been listening to these friendly little royalty-free jazz tracks the whole time. I'd much rather be showing you examples of their music, but let's look at what happens when I do that. My video about Juice World is blocked in multiple European countries and has made me less than $200 despite earning me 11,000 subscribers and a million views. And that's because I demonstrated a tiny clip of a song. And many of my other videos are in a similar situation, about half in total, leading to thousands of dollars of lost revenue. So this is why my friends and I teamed up to build our own platform where creators don't need to worry about demonetization or the dreaded algorithm. It's called Nebula and we're thrilled to be partnering with CuriosityStream. It's a place where we can both house our content ad-free and also experiment with original content and new series that probably wouldn't work on YouTube. For example, this video is completely different on Nebula with more content, extra discussions, different music and extra scenes. I'm very proud of it and I think you should go check it out and I plan to upload the full version of all my new videos to Nebula instead of YouTube from here on out. Plus on Nebula there are no ads, not even this one. But what does this have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, CuriosityStream is the best source for documentaries online. They love educational content and educational creators. Personally, one of my favorite documentaries on CuriosityStream is Capturing Woodstock. It's a fascinating look into the Woodstock Music Festival, an event that accidentally changed music and the world forever. So because CuriosityStream and Nebula go so well together, we worked out a deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, not only will you get CuriosityStream, you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. And to be clear, that Nebula subscription is not a trial. It's free for as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual plans as well. That's less than $15 a year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. So if you click the link in the description, you'll get both CuriosityStream and Nebula for 26% off or less than $15. Or you can go to curiositystream.com slash Volksgeist. It's a great way to support my channel and educational content for just $14.79 per year. Just click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Volksgeist. Clicking on the link really helps out my channel.